And welcome to Curious Minds, a curiously small map, as we only have six uh, bases spawning on either side. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the EPTNA Open Cup number 98. This is the round of four semifinals. I am Titan on Fire bringing this one. What's going to be? Banger series. Because in the top left hand corner, that's right from Kaitsa Gaming, it's solar. And in the bottom right, Team Liquid, the young Frenchman himself. That's right, it's Clem. I need to work on the smoothness of my uh, camera, but here we are on to Curious Minds, and it's definitely going to be an interesting TVZ, seeing as, um, you know, Solar is... <sighs> Solar is one of those Zergs where if he performed consistently when he's, you know, at his peaks, I have almost no doubt in my mind he would be one of the best players of all time. No doubt in my mind that he would be the, one of the best players of all time. Like, one of Solar's biggest downfalls is his consistency. And it really sucks because Solar's good. Solar's really good, you know? Solar, at, at times when he's been on form, has been able to, you know, <laughs> compete with the likes of Maru, you know, in really close games and then lose to a single nuke. And, you know, that's kind of, <laughs> like, as bad as it is, the nuke is, like, the story of Solar. Where it's just so close, but so far away. And it really does suck because he's a great player. And, you know, again, Solar has, for the longest time, been a top tier Zerg and just never really had a breakthrough performance. Um, he's gotten far. You know, he's definitely, he gets to the round of 16s, he gets to rounds of 8s sometimes, but never has had that breakout performance and gotten that really big win that I feel like he almost sometimes deserves, for sure. Definitely a Sue situation for Solar. Um, not to the extent of Sue, where um, Sue was, of course, I think, you know, potentially, you know, the best Zerg for a while. I mean, Sue <laughs> was so incredibly consistent for the longest time. He was, I mean, the story of Sue was pretty much you, if he had won all the finals that he had been in, he would have been the best Zerg player of all time. Like, he would have had, I think it was something like six GSL victories. Like, <laughs> it was, and I, I'm saying this as a massive Sue fan. It was um, definitely a, the, an extreme to Solar, um, was the Sue syndrome. Um, Solar, I think, is has something similar, but not to the extent of that. Clem, uh, however, is kind of the opposite. Clem has been very successful, um, and for good reason, because he's very, very good. And he absolutely deserves uh, all the success. He's such a, I mean, outstanding young player. And so it's going to be exciting to see him go up against Solar. Of course, this is going to be played on the NA server. Um, I believe this was the NA Open Cup, yeah. If I'm not wrong, this was the NA Open Cup. So both of them will be playing with equal ping, which is really nice. It's like we're playing on a tournament. You know, uh, in an online tournament, uh, because you know it's not it's not it's not Katowice yet. It's not Katowice yet, where we will be having everybody playing, of course, um, on equal ping, which will be an absolute joy to see. But you know, Clem is going to be going for cloaked banshees. Uh, actually, it might not be cloaked. Only a single gas. So yeah, no cloaked banshees. Sometimes you'll see uh, Clem has two variations of this. As well. Trying to find his way on into the main shouldn't be too successful. Good response from Solar. Shuts down the Hellions. So that's already two Hellions gone, pretty much. But, um, as I was saying, Clem has kind of two variations of this opener that he likes to go for, and I think this is the most common one, where you are going to be getting up into, uh, you know, the Hellions, Banshee with Cloak. Uh, sometimes he adds on the second gas a little bit faster for a faster Cloak. I have to imagine... I don't know if this is going to finish. He might finish it. I feel like this is one that you would cancel, though. Uh, this cloak. Just because it's going to be scouted. You're going to be getting two Banshees anyway. But there's already going to be Spore Crawlers up. As, ooh, Helling goes down. And it's just a gas investment that you don't really need to spend if you are so or if you are Clem. But we'll see. There's a very late uh, second gas. 
Oh, he did. Add, okay, okay. There was one. Never mind. That's a third gas because there was one in the natural. I was going to say, that's a very light second gas. There's no way that you can get cloak with just one gas. So, this is this is the standard uh, Clem opening. Fast 3cc, Hellions, Reaper, Cloak Banshee, get two of them out. And that's pretty much it. Uh, it's not a build that's really going to get a lot of damage done unless the Zerg is uh, kind of just not watching. Which is something that Solar doesn't do. Solar's very good about being on top of this stuff, about stopping Banshee Harass. I mean, you already have Queens and Spore Crawlers in every mineral line. And it does look like it's going to be uh, Ling Bane from Solar. You have, of course, with the double Evolution Chamber, doesn't mean that you're going to be getting into the Ling Bane, because your upgrade should be in, in synchrony with that of the Terrans. Um, we should be seeing them start up pretty soon here for Solar. Uh, the plus one melee and carapace should have been started at 530. Has the gas for them as well. So unless, I mean, unless this is something, I mean, obviously dealing with the cloak banshees and there we go. So just having to deal with that little annoyance as I have to start them up a little bit later. Ooh, my, Clem. Dives on in, gets 10 worker kills. Absolutely value for those few Hellions and Reaper, I mean, Right now, looking at, what, 13 drone kills in total from all of this. Absolutely worthwhile is what you pretty much want from this harassment. It's another one on the way. The fourth hatchery is, of course, on the way for solar, but it's going to be a, a decent bit until that is up. And behind it, Clem, at his third at plus one, plus one, going to be finishing up. I mean, a good chunk before the Zergs. Usually, these upgrades at the most should be 10 seconds away from each other or so. Um, and again, we saw that delay with Solar having to deal with the multi-pronged harass. So he didn't start them up immediately. And it will hurt. Peace Climb is going to be looking for a 1-1 push. You absolutely look for uh, a plus one, plus one push. With, you know, of course not with your tank, but just with your few marines, with your stim pack. And this, you're going to just be trying to push back creep, get a little bit of damage. So it's going to hurt a little bit for Solar to not have those upgrades. Up, of course, does already have centrifugal hooks and speed banelings, so can just force the pickup. The Clem should just find his way on into the main base, no problem. And now you have that 1-1 one, one finishing up. The Terran will take a supply lead, as is kind of natural at this stage of the game with, I mean, the 10 worker kills especially. Solar's had to re-drone those, and that's just a lot of money that he wasn't spending on units. That he wasn't spending on getting more workers than he already had. And so, you know, with 12 Hydras on the way, 74 workers in total for Solar. It's a decent economy. It's not massive, though. Nice focus fire. Just gets two Banelings pulled on out. Absolutely how you should be handling these drops is Clem with your fourth CC already on the way. And Clem is a player whose TVZ for the longest time was just the best in the world. I think recently it probably has been eclipsed by that of Maru, um, even though Maru has been losing a little bit recently. But... I mean, the main reason for it was because Clem was constantly getting practice every day against the two best Zergs in the world, which were Raynor and Serral. Of course, Rogue has recently come back into form as alongside Dark. I think or I think Rogue kind of reclaiming that throne as the best Zerg. Especially with his TSA 8 victory and Super Tournament win. But he's still just having Ling Bane trying to defend here the attacks from Clem, who has taken that 30 supply lead. I mean, Clem... Uh, one thing that he's so good at is the micro. And constantly keeping units alive. Clem does not let the Banelings get a connection. He keeps these these small unit balls of marines you know, alive and able to be used later on just for harassment to keep the Zerg on their side of the map. And this allows him at home to do whatever he wants, really. You know, Clem has just been constantly producing. He's currently sitting at two factories with the five racks. And he's approaching maxed out when Solar is only at one, you know, 70 supply or so. And... I don't think Solar is even really prepared with Lurkers. He doesn't have a Lurker Den on the map. He's getting up into Hive, but it's just Lingbane Hydra, which is not the best at dealing with these entrenched positions. But here we go, Solar. Gonna try and dive on top of a few of these Siege Tanks. It's so much bio, you have to use these Banelings well. And a lot of them end up going down. Clem, continuing to push the issue. Oh, more Banelings, oh, the focus, oh, the focus fire. Oh my Clem! What was that? That oh. <gasps> that was beautiful. Finally, he's gonna be forced to pick up. What do mines do? End up getting focus, or do end up getting uh, friendly fire? But oh, oh, that was so good.
That was so good. So many Banelings eliminated. I mean, Solar just loses so much to that fight. Over twice the minerals lost already. It just means that Clem, I mean, this this is how he plays TVZ. It's so convincing. It's so, I mean, just constant pressure, constant attack. Micro all over the place. Doesn't really lose focus of what he needs to do. This is going to be a very, very dead hatchery. A massive pickoff here for Clem. There just aren't enough Banelings to really fight. And now the Hydras are alone. And this is just one side of Clem's army. He's also attacking on the other side. Banelings can be some connection. But I think this is really just Solar losing on two fronts. As Clem's, his supply does drop, but it doesn't really matter. He's still pushing. GG. Clem takes game one. And, uh, yeah, game one. There's not much to say about it, honestly. <laughs> it kind of happened. Clem absolutely rolled Solar there in the mid game. And, I mean, it just goes to show Clem is so good. You lose 10 drones against him, and that's pretty much enough for him to snowball the game. Your upgrades are late. Oh, you can't trade as well? Well, that, that sucks, because you need those upgrades, and you need to be able to trade well. And if you can't, then it's pretty much just game over. That's pretty much what happened. Now, that's the story of the game. Late upgrades, 10 workers, Clem, just doing Clem things. Excuse me, as I have a bit of a stuffy nose right now. I'm not sure why. It's not a really allergy season just yet, although I usually do get allergies at the start of the winter. I don't know if anyone else has that problem. I have like a yearly, oh, time to, to get a little bit sniffly. And it's right as winter starts rolling around here. Though it's not been too cold, which has been very, very lucky. Uh, the snow hasn't fallen quite yet. We've still, it's been quite warm, which is surprising. Usually it snows down at this point. Can only hope for more. But we are just seeing Clem. I mean, confirmed that there's no early Zerglings. Of course, if you SCV scout after your racks, you will get there. Uh, by the time that if your opponent went for a 14 pool, then you will scout out the Zerglings. You will see them with your SCV. Just a little thing to note there for any Terran players that are maybe of a slightly lower level. If you want full scouting information, when your barracks finishes up, you can send your SCV cross at 20 supply. And it should let you know if there's early lings or what kind of early pressure there is coming out. If there's none, you just pull it back. You should be able to scout it right around the time you see the natural. I mean, if the natural's done at that point, then you would know. And then, of course... Sorry. I need to change that in-game overlay. And then, of course, if you... um. Oh, what was I going to say? <laughs> I completely lost my train of thought. Um, and then you bring the Reaper, of course, across to just harass. And other than that, I mean, completely standard game from both these players. You do see the Overlord hanging out, having a good old time, just doing his things, you know? As you do as an Overlord. You just kind of hang out. Oh, he's moving. Reaper didn't end up dying to those two queens um, that pushed out for the creep tumors. And honestly, there's not really a lot to say about the start of this game. I could go talking about, you know, the history of Clem and Solar, but honestly, they haven't played that much. Um, Clem and Solar have been two players that have not played altogether that much, aside from, I think, these EPT cups. And even then, they don't usually run into each other just because the only one that they'll both play in is the NA cup. And so there's not really a ton of history between them. To, to talk about. Which does just mean that we're just hanging out here. We're having a good time. We're chilling. Good old, good old StarCraft 2 cast and chill with Titan on fire. You can call me Titan if we're tight. We're close like that, you know? I, I, you guys, I feel like you've earned it. Um, but we are going to see the first interesting part of this game with a 2 1 1. That's. Bit of value there. You can trade seven lings for five marines. So just trying to keep the overlord alive, which he does. 
very, very nicely, but... Uh, this is an interesting 2 one one build for, for anyone wondering what actually Clem did. Uh, out of the early factory, did go for some Hellions. Actually went for two Hellions, I believe. And then that got him a little bit of a later reactor. And from that, you then get your starport as what was that, Clem? Clem! Don't control click your CCs. Don't do that. That's how you lift off your main. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a, a reactor on the, the factory that got out some two Hellions and then from there swapped over. So you have the starport now double pumping your medivacs. He's going to swap over and now you're just getting triple racks marine production. So it's kind of a, a strange 2 and one build that is not going to hit with as strong of an attack. It's not going to hit as early. The main goal is to apply light pressure and you get a faster third base behind it, hence why you don't have as many Marines. And it also transitions very, very nicely into getting your 1-1, one, one, into getting you know three racks a little bit more comfortably than if you went with a regular 2-1, and one, which is very reliant on getting at least a little bit of damage, especially if you're committing a lot to that pressure. Does Solar have enough Lings though? Currently it's sitting at 32, so has plenty of Zerglings to deal with this. I mean, really, the number you need to be at is around 24 um, with the queens. So 32 lings by themselves should be plenty. That's a triple expand from solar. What? That's crazy. That's a macro hatch and two expansions being put down. I mean, honestly, I don't think I don't think there's anything that Clem could do about it. There's really no situation which Clem is able to pressure enough to punish this. And I think Solar recognizes that. He went in, he scouted the timings, kind of scouted Clem's tech, and the timing on the third base says, oh, well, you're just letting me macro up. And that's absolutely what is happening. Is So Clem is going to be pushing out with a, you know, a decent sized army here, Widow Mines and Marines. A few medevacs to back it up. We'll definitely be able to at least get some damage done, but as soon as the rest of the Ling Bane kind of hemorrhages on over, as soon as that centrifugal hook especially is done, if uh, Solar can delay enough, ooh, baby, what a mine hits. Quite decent. But once that centrifugal hooks is done, this attack should be pushed back. And again, I mean, double expand. There's not really a lot you can do with the Terran here when you went for a macro build yourself. And this has kind of been of my hits are nasty. Uh, this has kind of been one of the weaknesses of Clem in the past. Is that sometimes Clem will, you know, never really apply enough pressure in the early game. He always plays for the mid game. You know, Clem is not a player who's going to go for a really cheesy opening. Uh, that's not just, that's just not his style really of Terran. But it does mean that some Zergs have been able to kind of take advantage of that. And to really kind of punish Clem for being so passive in the early game and for being so greedy himself. And that's exactly what we're seeing Solar do. You know, with two hatcheries going down, usually that's something that if the Terran has a more aggressive build, like a regular two on one, they can punish it and they can push it. And Clem should still be able to. You know, Clem still has a very large army sitting at 94 army supply. So he can still punish this. But it's very situational. And oh, these queens don't go down. Very nice catch. But now you have this base going to be pushed. What a mine's rolling on in. Well, not rolling on in, but just waddling on in. They're going to burrow down. And well, Solar's not really worried about defending. And I think this is a decent call to just go for the counterattack. You do manage to slow down that fourth base. In turn, you lose your fifth. It's not really the best trade. You lose 11 workers for Solar. Now down to 77, and still you have to try and commit on in to clean up this attack, but the Widow Mines are absolutely brutal. Does manage to clean up a majority of the army to at least, you know, alleviate some pressure. And there we go. Good Widow Mine drag. Clean up the last one. But I gotta say, Clem does just take the upper hand of these trades so far. 
mean, killing a hatchery for a delay on a fourth CC? Yeah, you'll take that any day of the week if you're the Terran. Just... Okay, I was gonna say, does Club not have plus two attack? That would be a pretty big oversight, but... Already had that finish, just starts on the plus two armor now. As we are just seeing Clem, I mean, continue to apply even pressure all over the map. Has these drops that can go into the main whenever they want. A few lings are there to help deal with it. Has this push coming onto the left flank to try and deal with his fourth base, which, I mean, Solar has still not established another base, which is very worrying because you kind of need that. You you need a fifth right now, when, especially with Clem sitting on four bases. You know, Solar's upgrades aren't ahead. Solar doesn't have Lurkers out just yet. He's getting into them. Does not have them. Oh, these Widow Mine. <laughs> it's are absolutely brutal. And there are Vipers out as well, but it's not really enough to do anything. I mean, finally this drop does get cleaned up. Fifth once again under attack should not go down. Clem finally starting to lose a few units here and there, but overall the Terran has been trading extremely efficiently. So lurkers are on the way, Hydras. I mean, finally, Solar getting into this composition that will at least better counter what Clem has. Which right now is just 3-3 three, three bio, working with a lot of Marines and Marauders with the Widow Mines. And that's really a about it. But Clem ha now has enough stuff that he can start to split up his army a lot more efficiently. And that makes it really hard for Solar, who's trying to, again, get up this fifth base. It's just going to die again. It's going to go down. Oh my god, these Widow Mine hits. They're just brutal. I mean, this army gets cleaned up, but the fourth is going to go down. Scans onto the Lurkers. They just do not have the attack upgrades. This is brutal. Absolutely brutal. The base goes down. Solar saves one, but loses the other. Oh my, this, this is Clem. Clem, this micro, this micro man. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. It's not, that's not, it's not fair. Ooh, oh, I love this actually. Wit of mine drops onto the lurkers, the speed burrow, speed umbro does manage to save at least one of them. The other does go down. But I mean, solar is at least stabilizing. Solar's getting to the, the time of the game where he will have at least a decent Lurker count. And that should help him defend these multi-pronged attacks better. Which means that Clem, I mean, should realize that, should start to pull back, should get ready, you know, just to macro or macro up onto his own fifth base. You know, to get 3-3, to work on ghosts, and to start to really head into that late game Terran army. Where's the burrow? Lurker goes down. We do have a link counterattack here onto the third. It's actually very nicely timed. No widow mines at home to, uh, to deal with this. Do have the reinforcing uh, Marines and Marauders, but that's just a kill onto a CC. No way. No, what? How? Clem just drops into this little patch right here and kills the hatchery with Marauders. That hurts so much, man. Solar is just taking an absolute beating this game. And is now, on, I mean, it's on even bases, even worker count into the Terran, who's now getting ghosts up finally. I mean, I, the one thing for Solar is that, hey, you got a lot of lurkers. That is about it. As soon as this lurker count, I mean, goes down, it starts to get a lot scarier, but there aren't, I mean, there aren't ghosts out is the weird thing for Clem. He had so much time to know that this was going to be lurkers and did not get ghosts out. Has them on the way now, but it's not going to be soon enough. This base just might go down. Twelve lurkers burrowing on in. Can't really do much about that. Especially with not a significant tank count, with not a significant ghost count. And it will just be CCs that are forfeit finally. We're going to see snipes go down. Only one lurker ends up dying. 
Does Sol Does Solar just win this? There's no way. There's no way. Right? But he's up in supply. They're literally even on bases now, again. Solar's actually gonna get ahead, finally, with his fifth base coming up. Does, does Solar win this? No. No. That's not okay. That's not how this, that's not how this is supposed to go. Clem, where were your ghosts? <laughs> I mean, he's of course producing a good amount now. He's up to 10, we'll be getting up to 14 with tanks underway, but it's only sitting at, you know, one factory producing tanks. The other one is for Widow Mines against a player who's going very heavy into the Lurker count. I mean, Rogue is one of the players, or <laughs> Solar is one of the players who matches Rogue with how many Lurkers he goes. 17 on the map right now. Clem is gonna try and push. I don't know if I like pushing right here. Good abduct. Snipes are gonna be interrupted. Ooh, very nicely done. Yeah, these interrupts on these snipes are actually really good, but Clem has taken a supply lead once again. Solar, though, this is his whole army. Solar is actually, oh, he's gonna commit onto the base. This planetary might just be dead. I don't know if there's much you can do to save it. Yeah, this tank goes down. That's a great move by Solar. He knows that in a straight up fight, you know, it does just come down to the micro and Clem with the ghosts probably does beat him. So just goes for the counterattack, kills the base. Clem is back onto four CCs, is back onto, I mean, pretty much two and a half bases with no tank upgrades. I mean, Clem, Clem just doesn't have tanks. And you know, is this is it's such a hard position to play from. I literally just casted a series live of Bion up against Serral. And the big issue is when you're just playing with Bio, when you're playing with this very mobile army, sure, it can trade well, sure. You know, you could be across the map and you can be in multiple places at once. But as soon as it comes to head on fight, you are gonna lose for the most part. I mean, the, of course, Clem's micro or micro can pull it out of the bag, but it's very hard. It's very, very hard. Especially, I mean, <sighs> Especially if these lurkers had plus three, they don't right now. You're just, we're seeing now the plus three melee attacks come up for Solar. And this base should go down. Solar didn't have enough units here. Actually has to resplit his army. Some of those morphing lurkers don't go down. Solar does manage to do just that. I would love to see Clem get more tanks up. I mean, this is how you see a player like Maru deal with this late game Zerg army is 20 plus ghosts, tanks, so many tanks. And one thing about Clem that I've kind of criticized in the past is that he has so many Widow Mines that are just taking up supply that he's not using that aren't really getting value. And it's the same thing this game. Right now you're sitting on right around 22 supply of Widow Mines. Now it's not a ton. Before I've seen him at, at like 40 supply of Widow Mines. But it does just make it hard to fight. You know, it does just make it very, very hard to fight. And for Clem, I'm, I'm a bit worried. Although getting these snipes on these lurkers is very nice. These scans just constant going down. I mean, how many orbitals right now? Sitting only at four. Of course, saving up all that scan energy. Solar. Gonna look to try and commit on in here, but you're into a missile turret. Lings commit on into the ghosts, and well, there's not really a lot here to protect the ghosts from the Zerglings. The planetary will help, but ooh, I love that. Parasitic bombs. Those medivacs were already so low, and that's just gonna clean up a few more. Oh, SCV is so many going down. 19 in total fall, 50 workers now available for Clem. As Solar, oh, that's very aggressive. Takes, I mean, the Widowmine shot straight to the Lurker Clump. He's gonna be able to clean up this Bioforce though. So in the end, I mean, a worthwhile move. Clem should be able to take down this top left base. There's not really much that Solar has here to defend it. That's a lot of workers going down for Solar. Actually, transferred 18, I think. Uh, workers up there, but Solar's actually committing on in with the Lings. The Lurkers are running forward, but they're just getting target fired. 
GG, okay, yeah, solar. What, what? All right. Well, we're on to Blackburn. As I have just finished my, uh, <laughs> my pained screaming about that last game, which was just, mm. in the bottom right hand corner, it is the man who caused me to have to take <laughs> a, like a 10 minute break between these games. Ladies and gentlemen from Kites of Gaming, it is Solar. And the Terran, playing quite well so far. I mean, one more win and he's going to go on to the finals of the NAEPT Cup 98. It is Clem, Clement. And you know, I'm a bit tired right now. You can probably tell in my voice. Uh, of course, just casted best of seven uh, live for the Alpha X Pro series. So I'm a, a little bit tuckered out. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that, that last engagement on 2K atmospheres, man, like, I understand, of course, Solar, you want to try and force the fight. You think Clem's out of position. It just made me like 10 times more exhausted watching it <laughs> because that's the type of game where if I was playing it as the Zerg, I I'd stop playing. That'd be it. I'm done. Stop playing StarCraft 2 for the day. I'm not laddering anymore. I'm just done. But Solar still has the rest of this best five to play. He's a professional. He will absolutely do so with style. Sorry about those little uh, lag specs. I didn't have to alt tab, but I mean the thing about it is like Solar knew the base was forfeit. You don't need to try and defend it because you're already taking you're you're taking another base, the bottom side of the map to make up for it, and then he also just runs the lurkers in. I mean first, the widow mines go off on them. It's just very very painful. It's it's, it's very painful. Any Zerg player knows that that is a painful experience to watch, to play, it hurts. Pain. This Reaper getting a bit adventurous going on into the main base. Does force a Spore Crawler morph, actually. As Clem, ooh, trying to show his fans feet, gets a bit close to losing it. And would you look at that? The third CC again, how surprising. If honestly, I am going to, right now, I could have done this last game even. Right now, I'm gonna make a prediction for how the rest of this series is gonna go. Um, so, Clem is going to build this third CC. Right after, there's gonna be a starport that's gonna go down. There we go. Oh, I'm wrong, it's the two one one, never mind. It's the two one one variation, okay, cool. It's the 2 one variation. So the other, of course, the other option is the Starport, the Cloak Banshee, uh, Reaper Hellions. But this time, Clem is just going back to that kind of delayed 2 on one that he did last game, which I think worked out decently well. My one issue with it is that Solar really didn't have any trouble defending it. And I think Solar actually overbuilt Lings. Uh, Solar went up to 32 Lings for a, uh, what was it? A 11 Marine Drop. When realistically, you only need their 24. And so that's just, you know, what? Four or so larvae that can be used for drones. And it's money that can be used for an extra base. You know, I think Solar overbuilt Zerglings. And I don't think that's a mistake that Solar will make twice. I think as long as Solar scouts this out, he should know exactly what the build is. I don't think he's going to overbuild and go up to 32 lanes again. I imagine he'll go up to 24, maybe 26. But that's my one kind of issue with the with the build, is that it doesn't take a lot to, to deal with it, and it doesn't apply enough pressure to really make the Zerg stop macroing up. I mean, Solar took two hatcheries even when he overbuilt worker or Zerglings, and Clem, of course, did a great job of you know, immediately going into double pronged uh, attacks and to deal with that, uh, to deal with that and to get rid of those bases. It definitely was a situation where it felt like Solar was in a good position, but then again, you know, 
Clem Micro, Clem Macro. <laughs> it is on another level in this matchup, really, uh, compared to 90% of other players. Now, the only ones that really compare, I'd say, are, you know, Serral, Rogue, Dark, Maru. That's it. You know, those are the players that can keep up. And maybe, you know, of course, Raynor. Also, you'd have to put in there um, with Raynor finally, I think, getting back into form after his move, um, especially with DreamHack coming up. Um, and with IEM Katowice coming up, has definitely gotten himself back into form. Is kind of doing that Rainer thing that he did last IEM, where he just kind of practices. Where he just practices so much and gets into like impeccable form for the main event. And so, you know, hopefully we'll see that when it comes down to it. But for this best of five that we have here, uh, looking completely standard, you know? Plus one, plus one this time. For Solar, he nailed the timing. Let's go! Woo! Has a fast plus one, plus one. It's going to be finished before the Terrans. That's exactly what you want when you're going straight Ling Bane. Is for that timing to be quicker than the Terrans. It does just help you out a lot. It lets you trade a lot more efficiently. It lets you, you know, take these aggressive trades. Of course, the upgrades aren't done yet, but still. It lets you take these aggressive trades. As Clems is going to be a decent far bit behind. It's currently going up to his five racks. Oh, sorry about that. While still trying to apply pressure, of course, with this double drop. Which has been... I mean, significantly depleted in just threat. An interesting left, you also have Clem taking this forward third base. Now, the reason why you take this forward third is because if you can defend it, you are, it's a lot easier to expand to these other bases. And you get the minerals off this base that's going to be heavily contested in the late game, so you're not having to defend it as hard when it gets into, you know, like Broodlord and Fester, when it gets into Mass Lurker. You're not really worried about defending this base as much, and you have more minerals left on these back bases, which are a lot safer. So I do like this expand pattern from Clem. I think it's the right call to make, especially on a map like Blackburn, um, which is you know such a weird layout. It's got kind of like the uh, the Space Invader look to it. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you are very young. Uh, but <laughs> it looks like a Space Invader. I'm telling you, if you ignore the top part, Space Invader. But plus two, plus two immediately start up for Solar. I love this, dude. This this is exactly what we needed to see last game from Solar. Is the immediate start up on the upgrades. Just getting everything rolling as fast as he can. Does lose a bit of creep at the front as Clem is pushing with this double drop. Which, there we go. Good dodge onto the Banelings. And Clem will have his own upgrades finally kind of following suit. Just trying to play hopscotch here with these medevacs, but fortunately, oh, won't lose one. Manages to get away. Clem also still trying to pressure this third base. There's not much that Solar can really do. I mean, he needs to split up his Zerglings, is what he needs to do. Right now, he has Zerglings on one side and no Zerglings on the other, and he just needs to split them up. There we go, finally going to be able to do so. Uh, because there's no range yet. The Hydralists are on the way. They're not out quite yet. Infestation Pit has just finished up, so the Hive and the Lurker Den aren't really going to be started too soon. Well, they're not going to be started or finished in time for this attack by Clem. But this is the first time that Solar's had a supply lead when this attack comes out. This is the first time that Solar has kind of hit all the macro cycles and is in a good spot where he has enough to defend, you know, both flanks. And I'm really liking this for Solar. Solar gonna commit on in. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! It's a massacre! And you know what? Clem is the only player. Is one of the only players who could focus fire his widow mine like that. That was brutal. This gold base still being denied mining by Clem. As he's pushing the front, not enough failings here to really make this a danger unless you don't focus fire. Clem can't micro perfectly all the time, so does end up losing a few marines. As again, this gold base just not being allowed to mine is so annoying if you are the Zerg. This is the base that you want up. This is the base that you really are going to use to compound your lead. Oh. So 
Solar Mage not to take too much damage there. Has Vipers on the way. Is the... No Lurker Den. Where's the Lurker Den? Where's the Lurker Den? Wait a second. Full Solars. Okay, it just started up. But that's a little bit late. Solar right now is just working with Lingbane Hydra and the Vipers. I feel like... I feel like that Lurker Den is late. I don't know. That might just be me. I might be completely wrong. This... Ooh, that drop gets completely cleaned up. Not exactly what you want if you are Clem. Had a lot of standing supply there that just ended up falling, and Solar has been managing these attacks well. They haven't killed workers, is what's to note here. Um, it's been trading for army. You know, of course, there's that one really big Widowmine hit, but other than that, Solar's been handling these very well. Now, he does have to be careful. Doesn't really have a lot of units down here to the bottom side of the map, and you have more coming through for Clem. Look at all of this. Right now, again, working on that two factory, eight racks for base economy. Oh, Solar, I love this move. He's going to commit to the counterattack. He says, listen, you're going to come back. You're going to lose a whole lot. And, well, I think Glem's going to lose a whole lot. Finally decides that he wants to retreat. Oh, let's look at this. I mean, everything committing on in. More Banelings going to roll through. What do you have if you're Clem? I mean, oh, the tanks and the Widowmines were left siege. That's massive. It's just the bio. It's going to be chased down into the slow zone. Oh, Solar might have just made the move that he needs to. The counterattack perfectly timed. Clem just suddenly drops in supply. Solar beautifully done. From behind this, I mean, sitting at 89 workers, working on plus three for his Ling Bane. Isn't, I mean, isn't even getting into lurkers. He's just rocking with this Ling Bane, knows that this is enough. And Clem, he's gonna try and fight it, but what do you really have? Not a whole lot. And Solar just does not micro back on these Widow Mine shots. I mean, they're getting so much value. So much value. Solar's gonna look for another attack. And what is there for Clem? It's just not a lot of army. I mean, he's he's close on army. And all these Widowmine shots again, if they keep being this good, maybe Solar might be overextending just a little bit, but the Banelings are rolling on in. We need to super zoom to get a shot of everything as Solar's massive army is trying to roll through the planetary. Banelings onto the mineral line. The planetary falls. As Solar trying to crush through Clem, almost drops sub 100 supply. Still has the gold base, but so does Solar. And Lurkers are almost on their way. Their upgrades are almost done. The morphing is almost complete. There we go. Lurkers. And their little spine is going to be trying to make Clem's life a whole lot harder. And well, it's already pretty hard as it is. 122 to split to 179. There's a whole lot for Solar, and there is a whole little for Clem. And you just see, I mean, Solar just spreading his army all out. He's, of course, going to lurker up the back of this gold base because I don't want you to mine. You're not going to get anything in this game, Clem. Your life is going to be miserable. GG. Solar brings it back. Ladies and gentlemen, we have game four. And you know who it is. In the top right of Hardwire. Bring in the back. We need to see it again, though. Consistency. Please. It's solar. And, of course, in the bottom left... He's, he's always good. He needs no introduction. It's Clem. It is Clement! And well, I mean, I had a good idea in that last game, but again, kind of showed where my issue lies with that 2-1-1 opening that he likes to do, or the delayed 2-1-1 that he likes to do.
where it just kind of ends up being very, very weak is what it feels like. Uh, and if the follow-up attack is dealt with properly, you know, if Solar hits his upgrade timings, just because you've done so little up until that point, it, you know, there's really not a lot that Clem can do as there was a pause here. As Solar was having a little bit of ping issues even on the US West server. It's a bit strange. US West, of course, is a bit favored towards the Korean player. Um, I believe it's usually around 120, while it's 160 for the European. And then if you go to Central, it kind of flip flops around, I believe, where it's 120, 160 um, for the European player and for the Korean player, respectively. And that's kind of how the servers go. Of course, the other way that you do it is by map pick. So if you choose the map, then you're going to be playing on the bad server. If your opponent picked the map, then it's going to be the good server for you. And so on and so forth. That's how it's balanced. That's the best way to do it. And it's, of course, very nice because we have so many server options. Um, you know. Oh, wow. The game had to be recovered from a replay. That's crazy. Um... But that's the nice thing about StarCraft 2 is that you have so many server options. Whereas in other games, you know, like League of Legends, although, of course, those have enough of a scene, you know, among themselves that you don't really worry about it. But that was something like Rocket League. When it was online, you couldn't really have international events because there's no real fair server between, you know, these teams that they had. And so it did cause a little bit of an issue. But StarCraft 2 did it. We thrive online. That is where we are the best. Although, honestly, I can't wait for in-person StarCraft 2. Oh, it's going to be so good. I'm not going to be there, unfortunately. Uh, I would love to be, but college. And so I will be watching online. Still, though, can't wait to hear the crowd. And, you know, All those things that make us love StarCraft 2 are the LAN events, really. That's what makes it good. As this was the build prediction that I went for last game. Where it's, you know, um, where it's the barracks, factory, Hellions, tech lab on the barracks, into the starport, second gas at the natural, into a delayed third gas in the main with an early third CC. It's going to be cloaked Banshees. It's going to be the first Banshee, then cloak, then the second Banshee. Because I believe I imagine how Clem's going to do it. Unless... Okay, yeah. There we go. Swap comes on over. So it's just going to be, you know, the standard Clem build. No. Hold the phone. He's mixing it up. It's a raven. It's a raven. That's cool. I don't think enough people go ravens in TVZ. I'll be honest. I don't do it either. But ravens are so useful. You want to know why ravens are useful? It's because they move about the same speed as the Reaper and the Hellions. And they give you vision. Although these Reaper, this Reaper and these Hellions, unfortunately are not long for this world because Clem is just fully committing. And I mean, hey, you're going to get a few drone kills, but oh, the wall. Solar. Beautiful. Beautiful. Did he lose a drone? Those two drones. Kills the Reaper and three Hellions. That was great. Two aliens do move on into the third at the same time. They only get three wor or two worker or a single worker. Sorry, or 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 they only get a single worker. Anyway, what I was gonna say is that the Raven is very very useful because you can push it out with uh, four aliens, and four aliens are up to one shot of creep tumor. You don't need to use scans. You can save. You can actually save your early scans um, for mules. You can save your scans for mules if you have a Raven. Uh, you're gonna get a lot stronger of an economy. You can save, you know, that energy. You don't need to scan for Burrow Banelings in the late game. You know, it's actually just such a useful unit as we see an auto turret plays down. Doesn't end up getting too much, but there you go. Creep tumor is cleaned up. It's gonna go in another creep tumor. And all behind this, what is Clem doing? Well, Clem's dropping mules. You know, Clem's adding on his, his engineering base. He's going up. Oh, that's a lot of racks. That's going to be going up to five racks immediately, placing them all down with the third base. I, I really like the Raven. I like the Raven. I love it when players add things on like this. I think it's such a good little touch. Though you don't want to lose it. As this queen is going to get chased down, transfused from across. 
the electronic tech thingy that is in the middle of this map, which I still haven't been able to identify. It's not a Thor. It's building something, though. It's building something. Uh, the creep spread has really been, I mean, delayed because of this. Again, it's just such a useful unit to have here for this early creep denial. It's just so nice. It's, ooh, that surround is decent. There's actually so many Hellions. Cloud went up to nine. Up to nine Hellions with an engineering bay on the way, of course. So if he keeps them alive, can morph them. Ooh, be careful with the Raven. Goes down 12 HP. Hellion's trying to commit on in. Find six drones. And Clem has been doing work with this early game. I mean, behind this, he was on one barracks for so long. Has been completely undisturbed. He's now getting up the second factory as well, adding on Marines. Has a double drop moving out now with Widow Mines. I'm loving this. I am loving this from Clem. Here we go, stim on in. You do have cloaked Widow Mines now, with the armory being done immediately. Two queens are gonna go down. This is looking pretty bad for Solar. I mean, he has the plus one, plus one upgrades, but everything's just been so delayed. I love this spot for the Marines. Oh, it's so nice. We'll finally be put up onto the high ground. I mean, hey, Clem can still micro this. So just gonna poke around. Has another attack moving out to try and deny this fifth base. I don't think there's much that Solar can do to hold this and also deny the drop. As, oh, that medevac should be very, very careful. But this is just awesome play from Clem this game. And Solar's just really been stuck. There's not a lot that Solar can do, you know? In the last game, he was able to defend and he was able to macro up. But in this game, you know, sure you're defending, but you're having to build so many army units. Oh. No, Widow Mines are still getting damaged. You're still losing drones. I mean, 14 drones have gone down this game. No SCVs. Clem has been so efficient. And just constantly attacking two places, constantly just applying pressure and being a nuisance at the same time he's taking his own fourth base, getting up 2-2, going up to eight racks. And I don't, you know, of course the game is very far from over, but Clem's in such a good spot right now as he takes a supply lead. And this has been with Solar hitting his timings. With Solar, you know, having good timings on the 2-2, with getting the Hydralis out at the same time. And this is the exact same build order as last game for Solar. But Clem's just doing so good. And this Raven throws down auto turrets and suddenly the Ling's aggro onto them. This is so cool. Oh, Widowmine shot, very, very nice. Folks fire onto one of the Banelings. The second one goes down, another Baneling targeted down. Oh my God, Clem, it's so clean. Is now just gonna stutter step back. He's gonna end up losing, you know, this army, this position, but at the same time he's pushing into the other base. Doesn't get a lot of drones so far, but it's cleaning up lings. He's just continuing to fight. Now drones are gonna start to go down. And Solar just drops in supply, Clem. Such a clean game. Kind of a return to form, I think, to what we expect for Clem's TVZ for a while. He didn't quite look like he was at the same level that he used to be. But this, I mean, this has been this, this looks like Pete Clem with constant multi prog attacks. I mean, target firing Widow Mines, the splits, the target fire on the Banelings. You know, doing all of these little micro moves in battles. So solid. As this really, I mean, is the final hold here for Solar. And what can he do? Well, he's going to try and push on in. Here we go, Solar. Trying to make it work with the tank siege up. GG is called, Clem. We'll take it in four.